Hey guys, so today we're going to be taking a break from the Ben Riley web shooter to work on some cartridges. Now I've brought up this concept before, but I'm going to explain it from where my thought process came from. So these are my old arm cartridges. Uh, they look alright, they've served me pretty well, I've used them for more over a year now. And they're made of clear PVC pipe uh, with a plastic adapter here to go down from half inch to one eighth inch NPT. Uh, bolted and clamped together with this 3D printed part here, standard buckle, and uh, yeah, they've served me pretty well, like I said, nice window to see the fluid level. However, the thing is, is that these can only hold about 30 milliliters of fluid. That's not a lot, that's 30 cubic centimeters. So I was surprised to find out that preformed cartridges, like these, can actually hold about 40 milliliters, and I found that out through Human Spider's YouTube video. I got to thinking, I was surprised, because these actually look smaller than this. You can see it looks smaller. But this can hold 40 milliliters, this can hold 30 milliliters. So, it's probably because the wall thickness of this is a lot thinner than this. The walls make up a lot of the total volume of this. So, it's kind of like magic, and, and I thought, you know, these are definitely good. They can obviously hold the pressure. They've been tested by other people, Human Spider, Spider Slayer, and Blood Spider. I haven't used these yet. I'm kind of late to the party. So, I am going to need to something to adapt to this to get to a 1 8 inch NPT fitting so that it can go on to the rest of my web shooters. So, a lot of people have used just soda caps on top of these, and they've sort of epoxied a valve on there. I'm not really about that approach. It, it obviously, I, I haven't heard of anything bad happening, but uh, it's just not the kind of engineer that I am. So I am going to be using these. I brought these up before. These are for soda carbonation machines. Uh, essentially, there's supposed to be a tube on here, I believe, and then they can fit right on there. And these go into a machine. You can see there's a one-way valve right here. So only air can pass through that way, but not that way. We have taken apart that valve in a different video. Yeah, voila. So this is a perfect, uh, nice, engineered fitting for the soda bottle preform. Now, this is made of steel. That's one of the downsides. It's made of steel, so it is super heavy. And the other downside of that is it is very difficult to machine. It's difficult to cut. It's difficult to shape. It's difficult to do anything on it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So obviously if these were made of something like aluminum or brass, that would be much better. They're made of stainless steel. It's uh, common for the food industry. And I am essentially going to take these and turn it into something that I can use. So that's what's inside that valve. Like I said, I've explained that in a different video. So then you were just left with this, which is one steel piece, sort of a husk of the valve. We're going to use a lathe to drill into this and tap it using a 1 8 inch NPT tap. All right, so here we are at the lathe. First thing we're going to do is put our part in the jaws. So basically what I'm thinking is we're going to drill that hole so that we can tap with a 1 8 inch NPT. But because of the shape, there's not actually going to be that much thread engagement after we do that. So we might have to part it and then rely on that thread that's already built in, which actually I found out adapts perfectly to a 1 4 inch NPT thread. And then we can just have an adapter from there. Alright, so here is our 1 8 inch NPT tap. First we're going to need to widen that hole to fit the tap. So I'm looking now, recording this after the fact, and it seems that everyone says to use an R size drill for 1 8 inch NPT tap. The chart in my shop said 11 30 seconds, so that's what I used, which is a little bit bigger, but it ended up working just fine.
This isn't really relevant, but I just want to say I really hate machining steel. It's loud, and there's all these random puffs of smoke, and I feel like I could never do it correctly, but here we are. All right, there's clearly a big burr on that hole, so we're going to remove that with this tool. All right, so that's, uh, that's almost gone. We might need to sand it down, though. All right, and the next step is tapping. So we're gonna replace the drill bit with this tapping guide, put that in the drill chuck instead. And now we're gonna put the tapping wrench with the 1 8 inch NPT tap already installed. And now we are going to turn this tapping wrench over and over again and attempt to cut threads into this very tough steel. I kid you not, that took me like 40 minutes, <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Alright, so as you can see, we have tapped this with a 1 8 inch NPT thread, and these are the ball valves that I use in my web shooters, 1 8 inch NPT male on this side, 1 8 inch NPT female on this side. Uh, these are pretty essential in my opinion, not everybody uses stuff like this, but I have always included something like this just for the sake of safety uh, in case web shooters break because I do do a lot of physical activity with the web shooters on if the web shooters break then I have a safety mechanism in order to save my web fluid and not embarrass myself by just involuntarily spraying web fluid everywhere and yeah it fits pretty well on here it's like perfect it's like they were made for each other. And now, we add the preform. Voila. Here we have our cartridge. So ignoring how broken this web shooter is, um, this is a web shooter that you will see in a little video called Spider War. And I use this through the duration of the race between myself and Blood Spider. Speaking of which, that is coming soon still. <laughs> um, and yeah, so the tubing that I use to connect to web shooters. I've always pretty much used these barbed connectors here, um, which essentially, I don't feel like taking this off right now, but uh, it's, it's something like this where a tube fits over and the barbs uh, prevent it from going the other way. And then I use these uh, tube clamps to keep that down and so it doesn't slip off. I've also sometimes used steel wire uh, wrapped around and twisted to tighten that. But uh, clamps are obviously more elegant. But all in all, this isn't super elegant, is it? I mean, it's not easy to take the tube off of the fitting. 
Uh, I've always wanted something better than that and I think I'm finally going to move away from these connectors. So I've got a couple options. This is a push to connect fitting. Uh, you might see these on 3D printers. They usually have Bowden tubes attached so the filament passes through and you can easily connect the tube, Bowden tube that the filament needs to pass through to get to the extruder. That is if you don't have a direct drive extruder, which I do not. Basically how this works is you take your tube, you push it in very firmly and you can't pull it out. I'm pulling as hard as possible. I can't possibly take this out. But the only way to take it out is by squeezing this down and then you can remove it, right? And so I don't know if you can see, but if you look inside, you've got these sort of tabs and once you press down, those tabs fold into the wall. Just like that. And they're flared inward so that it can lock onto the tube. So that's one of our options. Uh, these, you might think that these would be a little bit weak because it seems like the connection method is a little bit weak. These are actually rated for 290 PSI at room temperature. So yeah, we'll see if that holds up. Um, I'm not sure how good the seal is gonna be on these. I'm not sure how good the resistance to the kind of chemical nature of web fluid is going to be because web fluid obviously it dries, it gets everywhere. So with like so many small moving parts that this fitting requires, who knows if web fluid is, is going to work with these. I'm, I'm pretty confident it would work with water and air and all that stuff, but web fluid is a whole other, whole other beast. So that's one of our options. The other option is this compression fitting. How this works is a tube will fit over this and then this will screw down and sort of squeeze that tube onto here. So I can't really demonstrate it. The tubing that I have is a little bit uh, too small to go over that, but it's the right outer diameter. So what I've done is I've just kind of taken a section and hollowed it out a tiny bit and then press it on there with the compression fitting. So I've done that right here. And uh, as you can see, a lot more stable uh, than what this might be. And it looks a lot better than a hose barb. Uh, <laughs> it sounds dumb, but this also doesn't really go with the color scheme here, uh, as you can see. This is all sort of a nice silver, sort of millennium look, and then this is just brass. And brass is nice, but you know, if I can get something like this to work, oof. Oh, I mean, look at that. Look at that. That would be pretty. Mm. Oh, it's, it's just beautiful. It'd be nice if this works. I'm going to do some pressure tests. I've ordered a pressure gauge. It'll be here tomorrow. We're gonna to see which fitting, either the push to connect or the compression fitting will be better. Obviously, I think the compression fitting will work. I'm just kind of curious about this. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some R134A in here with the valve closed. I'm going to connect one end of the tube with the compression fitting to my new cartridge. I have this sort of three-way brass fitting and I'm gonna use that to connect to the other end of my tube, like so. And then I'm going to connect this to my old cartridge, which is definitely getting old because the threads are a little crazy. So we've got this set up here, and then the pressure gauge is gonna go right in there. And so when that's done, I will open the cartridge and I will have this one very far away from me because this one will probably fail before this one does. So I'm gonna have this very far away, stretch that cable out, and I'm, when I open the cartridge, I will find out if the uh, compression fitting can hold that pressure, and we're gonna see exactly how much pressure that is.
All right, so as I'm recording this outro here, I have the pressure gauge. It can go up to 200 PSI. We shouldn't reach that. We should only probably be between 80 and 120 there. And I'm excited to see how much pressure we get and see if the quick connect fitting can work. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. You can see their names on the screen here. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without them. There are no STL files for this episode because we really only machined this piece right here. So feel free to check out episodes one, two, three, and four of research and development on my channel. And if you want to see the STL files for those episodes, feel free to contribute on my Patreon. Thank you guys so much, and I will hopefully see you next week.